Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Before we begin our ordination celebration this morning, just a few announcements that I'd like to make. First of all, it's extremely important that while we're here on the plaza that everyone keep your mask on at all times. Please do not remove it until you are back at your, in your vehicle this morning. It's also extremely important to maintain social distancing at all times in order for your safety and the safety of everyone here this morning. You have received, I believe, a safe uh, tracing card. I would ask that if before the end of the ceremony today on your seat there is a number, if you would either just take a picture of that number with your smartphone or record that number on that self uh, tracing card. Those tracing cards are extremely important to us here at the cathedral in the event that someone were diagnosed with COVID, we would ask that you would call the cathedral and inform us. We then will just ask for that number. We will not ask for your name or any other information, just your number. And then through our social media platforms, we will post an announcement that on this day, uh, between these hours, a person here at the cathedral tested positive with COVID. If you were seated in that general area of that number, then um, to please contact their doctors. So those self-tracing cards are extremely important for us. In regards to the celebration of the liturgy this morning, just a reminder that at the sign of peace, please do not exchange any sort of sign of peace with anyone, even the individual sitting next, next to you. Please refrain from that. At the time of communion, Bishop Alex will lift up the host and say, the body of Christ, all of us with our mask on will reply amen so that when you do come forward to receive holy communion all you need to do is extend your hands forward as far as possible the priest will then give you communion on your hands you do not respond with nothing just receive the host follow the direction of the usher they will lead you to a certain spot after receiving communion, there you lower your mask, consume the body of Christ, put your mask back on, and then proceed to your place. I will remind you of that right before communion this morning. Following the celebration of Mass today, then I will invite everyone to be seated and then go over the directions for dismissal from the plaza this morning. So once again, welcome to the cathedral, and we pray especially for those ordained to the diaconate this morning, that God will continue to fill them and their ministries with the gift of his spirit. Let us stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with all of you. Good morning. Many blessings today, correct? For one thing, we have nice weather. You should have been here the last time we had an ordination. <laughs> it was something else, and it is such a blessing for us to have this kind of weather during this wonderful celebration that we are going to have this morning. And of course, an even more wonderful blessing are the nine men whom we have here in our midst who are going to be ordained as deacons of our church. And so we pray uh, during this celebration that God will pour down many, many blessings upon them uh, during this transitional diaconate uh, that they are going to be spending over the next eight months or so. Let us now prepare ourselves for this Mass by calling to mind what sinners we are and asking God to forgive us our trespasses. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Jeremías En tiempos de Josías, el Señor me dirigió estas palabras Desde antes de formarte en el seno materno, te conozco Desde antes de que nacieras, te consagré como profeta de las naciones Yo le contesté Pero Señor mío yo no sé expresarme, porque apenas soy un muchacho. El Señor me dijo, No digas que eres un muchacho, pues irás a donde yo te envíe, y dirás lo que yo te mande. No tengas miedo, porque yo estoy contigo para protegerte. Palabra del Señor. El Señor extendió entonces su brazo, con su mano me tocó la boca y me dijo Desde hoy pongo mis palabras en tu boca Palabra de Dios Y a la paz Los que 
from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, be serious and sober-minded that you be able to pray. Above all, let your love for one another be increased because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. As each one has received a gift, Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's various graces. Whoever preaches, let it be the word of God. Whoever serves, let it be the strength of God's supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servants be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Those who are going to be ordained to the sacred order of diaconate, please stand. Patrick Ayala Garcia. Cesar Guardado Marin. Andrew Hedstrom. Sergio Rene Hidalgo. Francis Kim. Jihoon Kim, Michael Cooney Masteller, Matthew Thomas Miguel, and for the Eurist Congregation of Jesus and Mary, George German Perez, Most Reverend Father. Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon recommendation of those responsible, I testified that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can we have to stand up? Yes, please. Come. Oh, okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, so it's uh, a, a privilege uh, for me uh, to be here ordaining uh, our, our deacon candidates uh, this morning. As uh, you uh, all know, uh, this should have happened a month, more than a month ago, right? But uh, uh, it was not to be, and uh, I really think, uh, reflecting on this occasion, that this is a truly, truly blessed moment for uh, our deacon candidates who are going to be ordained today. And for those of us who are attending uh, this particular ceremony, because the ordination was moved to October, which is the month of Mary. And, uh, and I'm sure many of you know that. And so uh, the church, of course, now uh, is into a lot of devotions honoring our Blessed Mother, asking for intercession. 
uh, for our needs. And of course, that's one thing that you and I need to do for our, uh, for our deacon candidates, those who are going to be ordained deacons. They also for the deacons, uh, those who are going to be ordained deacons themselves, to continue to turn to our Mother Mary and ask her for, inter for her intercession during this uh, uh, eight months or so that these uh, deacons are going to be serving uh, the church in this ordained uh, capacity. Now, uh, uh, this is um, uh, for, for those who are going to be ordained priests, uh, of course, those who are going to be ordained today. Uh, uh, but, but for those of you who are not as familiar with, with uh, this particular stage, uh, this is a very st important stage uh, in, 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 in the life uh, of uh, someone who's going to be ordained a priest. Uh, because uh, at this stage, uh, we, uh, we hope and pray that we will appre appreciate fully our lives of service, of service as priests, because that's what the diaconate uh, is all about, lives of service. Now, I, I, uh, in your, in your um, uh, worship aids, uh, there should be, you should find a, uh, a prayer card that I decided I'd print really big, okay, so it doesn't disappear <laughs> from the possession of our deacons, because this comes from the National Directory for the Formation, Ministry, and Life of Permanent Deacons in the United States. You know, the book that our, our, our church has for the formation, ministry, and life of, uh, of deacons. And I just felt that it is so important for us to uh, reflect on this, to pray this, as a matter of fact, uh, today. And uh, as often as you can, uh, you know, after, after today, uh, for our deacons and for the deacons that are already ordained, uh, for the deacons that are going to be ordained today, and those who are already the deacons uh, in our church. And so, like I said, uh, this, this uh, particular prayer, uh, you know, it's very important uh, for us to offer uh, uh, to, our, to our Mother Mary uh, to, to help deacons live lives, uh, uh, good lives, lives of service, and especially for our de the, de the deacon candidates who are going to be ordained today, uh, lives of service that really uh, is, is their foundation, is the foundation of their lives as priests in the future. Okay? You know, now it's temporary, so this is a time, this is the time to, to really uh, I, uh, appreciate more uh, this particular uh, I, I, uh, aspect of, of, of the lives that we're now going to be living from this point uh, onwards, uh, just increasing, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, through, through your lives uh, as priests as well. Now, uh, for those of you who are deacon candidates or who are going to be ordained deacons, I know you probably uh, are finding this time um, a little strange because you're really not going into parishes after this, right? Uh, with ministries like the, 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 the groups, uh, before you had the opportunity to do before their, their ordination to the priesthood. But nevertheless, you can spend uh, this time uh, in, in prayer and in, in reflection uh, to have a fuller appreciation of what it is that's being given to you uh, as a gift today. I just want us to go through this uh, prayer. Basically, that's going to be my homily, you know, uh, it, because I, I really feel that uh, we, we need to ask the help and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And like I said, I really see uh, the fact that you are being ordained on this month, the month of Mary, as, as a, uh, an indication that what, that's what you're being called to do at this time, to really turn to our mother, uh, Mary, and ask her to help you during this time, this very strange time, uh, I, 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 as, as you are trying to I, I, uh, fulfill your ministry, you know, however much uh, that might be uh, during this time, uh, as deacons, just asking our Blessed Mother to be with you uh, the whole time. And so just let's go through, through the, uh, the petitions that are on this prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary for, for deacons. You know, the first one goes, Mary, teacher of faith, Mary, teacher of faith, who by your obedience to the word of God have cooperated in a remarkable way with the work of redemption, make the ministry of deacons effective by teaching them to hear the word and to proclaim it faithfully. Now we can do the same. 
uh, as Mary did in cooperating in a re remarkable way in the work of redemption, making Jesus present. You know, giving birth to Jesus wherever we find ourselves, to those people who are going to be around us and experience God through us. And then make the ministry of deacons effective by teaching you to hear the Word of God and to proclaim it uh, faithfully. Now, we know that uh, that's one of the, one of the, one, one of the duties uh, of, uh, and, and, and the privileges uh, that, the, that the deacon uh, has uh, by virtue of, of, of this ordination, the opportunity to proclaim the Word and, and to preach. Now, it comes easy for some, not so easy for, uh, for others, but it is a duty and privilege that should be treasured by each one of us as ordained ministers. Something that we need to continually grow in appreciation of. You know, I belong to the group to whom it was not easy <laughs> to preach. Okay, but here I am. <laughs> and I, I understand this is being recorded, so, you know, God help me. And, and, and this, uh, in, 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 in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 2 of the Gospel of Luke, uh, we are told, you know, that Mary observing what's happening to her, that she learned to see as God's work in her life, that hopefully we all continue to see as we hear the Word, uh, the word of God proclaimed in our midst, as we ourselves proclaim that Word of God, and that we keep all of these things that we hear and observe around us and continue to reflect them uh, in our hearts. Now the next petition goes, Mary, mother of charity, a teacher of charity, I should say, Mary, teacher of charity, who by your total openness to God's call have cooperated in bringing to birth all the church faithful, make the ministry and the life of deacons fruitful by teaching them to give themselves totally to the service of the people of God. Now, the gospel you chose, because I know it's the class who chose the readings that we have today, we hear uh, Jesus uh, telling Andrew and Philip uh, in this particular gospel from John, Amen, I say to you, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. Now, dying to ourselves is a very, very important part of what uh, we need to do to continue to grow in our appreciation of, of this gift uh, that God has given us. Dying to ourselves, not imposing our will and whatever it is that we think uh, we have uh, on others, but really just relying on God's uh, message and inspiration uh, to us to see how we are going to deal with people and how we are going to impart or to share the Word of God with people. It's extremely, extremely important. It is dying, dying to oneself, and like I said, not being uh, in a position where we think, we already have the answers and imposing what it is that we think is being given us or we think we need to impose on others so that what we believe God's will would be done. In other words, uh, my point here is the importance for us to always observe if we are becoming self-righteous. If you are starting to believe that whatever it is that we think needs to happen, okay, uh, is, is, is uh, actually coming from God, but we have to have, to have the, the discernment uh, to know if it's coming from us or if it's coming from God. Because we need to always be conscious of our effort in truly serving the needs of others and not our need to be right. You know, the need to be right on the part of each one of us, especially for those of us who are ordained. My experience, my personal experience is very, very strong. 
And so we always have to keep discerning that. Like I said, just keep looking into yourselves to make sure that you are not doing something out of self-righteousness, but because we are, we are doing it for others to serve the needs of, our, of, of that other. We have to always be able to make that distinction. That is why the next part of the prayer, I think, is extremely important. The next part of the prayer goes, Mary, teacher of prayer, through your maternal, maternal intercession, have supported and held the church from her beginnings. Make deacons always attentive to the needs of the faithful by teaching them to come to know the value of prayer. It's important for us to help others learn to know the importance of prayer in their lives, but we can only do that by practicing that in our own lives as well. In the second reading of the day from the first letter of Peter, the one that you chose, we have the, we have the, 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 uh, the, the phrase that goes, Beloved, be serious and sober-minded so that you will be able to pray. Be serious and sober-minded so that you will be able to pray. It's important, it's very, very important for us to spend time and be conscious and really uh, put ourselves in a position or in a frame of mind that will, that will enable us to pray properly and pray effectively. Take seriously our duty to pray. That is one of the things that you are going to be asked to do and to, to, to promise today. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. And so take seriously this, this duty to pray. Uh, for many, uh, I, I, you know, I, they, they, they give up uh, the prayer, or I shouldn't say they give up, but they forget to pray uh, because they are stressed out or just gets too busy and so on uh, and so forth. But we really need, and you know that from your formation in the seminary, to cut out time for prayer always. Extremely, extremely important. Because, and the other, the other reason is because sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between my need, my needed desire to be right. Pointing out self-righteousness again, okay? It's difficult to distinguish between my needed desire to be correct and to be right and what is the true will of the Lord. Is it me or is it God? But prayer is what will help us in discerning which is which. And finally, the last two petitions. Mary, teacher of humility, who by constantly knowing yourself to be the servant of the Lord were filled with the Holy Spirit, make deacons docile instruments in Christ's work of redemption by teaching them the greatness of being the least of all. Like I said, something that we always have to work on as ministers of the church because tremendous power is given us and people actually uh, I defer to us in many, many things and recognize us, uh, I, I recognize uh, the power, and the, the, the authority the, that we have in many, many things. So it's really important for us to keep this in mind, that we need to be docile instruments of Christ in the work of redemption and that we need to be great by being the least of all. And the last petition, Mary, teacher of that service which is hidden, a service which is hidden, who by your everyday and ordinary, ordinary life filled with love knew how to cooperate with the salvific plan of God in an exemplary fashion, make deacons good and faithful servants by teaching them the joy of serving the church with ardent love. Love in its truest sense. Not love of the positions that we're holding, but love of the other that we serve for the sake of that other. It's very, very difficult to
to make the distinction many times, and it's so easy to fall into the trap, the, the trap of thinking we're acting uh, out of love, when actually we're act, uh, acting out of love for a, spe spe a specific position that we're holding. Something that we really need to continue uh, discerning about throughout our entire lives. Now, in the, in the uh, gospel, uh, in, the, in the first letter of Peter today, we are advised or we are exhorted by, uh, by, by, uh, by Peter, let your love for one another be, be intense. Let your love for one another be intense. But like I said, we need to exercise a love that is intended or that's focused directly on the other and the need, the need of the other. A love that is patient, we find this in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, the love that is patient, one that is kind, one that is not pompous, one that is not inflated, one that is not rude, one does not, that does not seek its own interests, but one that rejoices with the truth. A love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Now keep uh, this prayer card handy. You know, put it in your favorite book. Uh, throughout your time as a transitional deacon, keep reading it. Keep reflecting on, uh, on it. And I, I ask, uh, you know, members of your family and friends who are here today to do the same for you. Por favor, guardan por, por, por favor hay estas uh, hay, uh, uh, hojitas de oración y uh, uh, lo siento porque no tenemos uh, traducción en español porque no hay uh, espacio <laughs> en el papalito para, para hay, uh, uh, pero uh, ustedes pueden orar esta oración también por los uh, diáconos que vamos a ordenar uh, este día hay, uh, hagan copias uh, por favor, uh, de, este, uh, de, de esta oración, make a copy of this, uh, uh, I, uh, of this prayer. You know, there is no copyright, okay, attached to it. <laughs> so make uh, copies of it. Put it on your nightstand. Put it on your altar. You know, make bookmark marks of it uh, and, and use it for the books that you're going to be using uh, for, for the rest of the, uh, the year today. And every time you see it, just pray it and reflect on it. And do that often, because I know that with the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary, praying this prayer to her for deacons for you and other deacons in our church, you will grow to become good deacons and eventually wonderful priests. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people. I do. Do, you, do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Those of you who are prepared to embrace the celibate state do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to the 
Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man. Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Prometes obediencia y respeto al obispo diocesano y a superior religioso. El, el Dios mismo lleve a término esta obra buena que en ti ha comenzado. Prometes obediencia y respeto a tu obispo. Sí, prometo. Que Dios mismo lleve a término esta obra buena que en ti ha comenzado. Prometes obediencia y respeto a tu obispo. Sí, prometo. Que Dios mismo lleve a término esta obra buena que en ti ha comenzado. Prometes obediencia y respeto a tu obispo. Sí, prometo. Que Dios mismo lleve a término esta obra buena que en ti ha comenzado. Do you promise respect and obedience to your bishop? I do. And may God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your bishop? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. And may God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. And may God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your ordinary? I do. And may God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of His blessing on these, His servants, whom in His kindness He raises to the holy order of the diaconate. Please stand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us. Our Lady of the Angels, pray, pray for us. It's Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, pray, pray for us. us. Holy Angels of God, pray for us. Saint Daniel, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Jude, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Vincent, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Barbara, pray for us. Saint Bibiana, pray for us. Saint Andrew Kim Tyka, pray for us. Saint Toribio Romo, pray for us. Saint Oscar Romero, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Maria Garatti, pray for us. Saint Emidius, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasia, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Ephraim, pray for us. Saint Patrick, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Lisieux, pray for us. Saint John Paul the Second, pray for us. Saint Philip, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Claire, pray for us. Saint Bernadine, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint John Hughes, pray for us. Saint Vincent de Paul, pray for us. Saint Kateri Takuitha, pray for us. Saint Philip Neri, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Joseph of Cupertino, pray for us. Saint Rose of Lima, pray for us. Saint Louis de Montfort, pray for us. Saint Sergius, pray for us. Saint Hermano Pedro, pray for us. Saint Didacus, pray for us. Saint Eugene de Mazano, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Bernadette, pray for us. Saint Josephine Baquita, pray for us. Saint John Bosco, pray for us. Saint Damien of Molokai, pray for us. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint Maximilian Colby, pray for us. Saint Pio of Petriclina, pray for us. Saint Jose Maria Escriva, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. Saint Ferdinand, pray for us. Saint Joan of Arc, pray for us. Saint Juan Diego, pray for us. Saint Dominic Savio, pray for us. All holy men and women saints of God, pray for us. Lord be merciful. 
Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful service to your church. Lord, deliver us, we hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but makes all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through Him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, His body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours, who will minister at your holy altar, and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel of virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of a spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct, so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with Him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
George, recibe el Evangelio de Cristo, del cual ha sido constituido mensajero. Esmérate en creer lo que crees, lo que lees, enseñar lo que crees y vivir lo que enseñas. Patrick recibe el Evangelio de Cristo, del cual ha sido constituido mensajero. Esmérate en creer lo que lees, enseñar lo que crees y vivir lo que enseñas. César recibe el Evangelio de Cristo, del cual ha sido instituido mensajero. Esmérate en creer lo que lees, enseñar lo que crees y vivir lo que enseñas. Sergio recibe el Evangelio de Cristo, del cual ha sido constituido mensajero. Esmérate en creer lo que lees, enseñar lo que crees y vivir lo que enseñas. Andrew, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Francis, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Jihun, receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Michael, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Yeah. Matthew, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach.
And let us acknowledge our new deacons with a big round of applause.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood, the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself, and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and make and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we truly offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the entire world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. 
Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, true and living. In communion with those, mem with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, and also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O Lord God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving thanks, he said a blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that this gift be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember, Lord, also your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us, also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
the body of Christ. For the reception of Holy Communion today, a reminder that Communion will only be given on the hand. Please make sure that your mask is on when you come forward. The priest will place the body of Christ on your hand. There is no need for you to say amen or any other response. Once you've received the body of Christ in your hand, follow the directions of the ushers. You will then go to that spot, lower your mask, consume the body of Christ, put your mask back on, and then make your way back to your seat. Thank you. Que 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity through Christ our Lord. I just want to say thank you to everyone, uh, to my brother priest, to all the families, to Vicar for Clergy, uh, vocation directors, uh, for supporting all these men uh, in their vocation. Uh, keep praying for them. Um, especially, thank you, uh, Bishop, for accepting all this. I'll see you next week up there <laughs> in the seminary. Um, uh, oh, yes. They still have to go uh, through one more year of this more year of formation, academic year. So keep praying for them, for the strength, so that they may be ready for the sacrament of priesthood. Thank you again, and congratulations to you. And, uh, and a special thanks, of course, to the four mayors who uh, have helped our, our uh, deacons ordained today uh, to reach this point uh, in their life as, uh, as ministers uh, of the church. And we thank also uh, the family and friends uh, of uh, our deacons, uh, our new deacons uh, today for the support that you have given them uh, throughout the years. Thank you very much. I think you deserve a round of applause too, especially from the deacons. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I'd invite everyone to please be seated. Priest, you may go to your left and to the vesting area. If you haven't done so already, I'd please invite you to record the number on your tracing card or to take that.